So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof, it's Windows Pro time. Okay, tally ho there. Now, as you can see, I'm recording directly into this MacBook Pro. Studio quality speakers. Well, are they? Let me know. So now we're actually going to see how this 16 inch MacBook Pro base model with the new graphics card and an i7 compares to the MacBook Pro 15 with Vega 20 and an i9. And I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the performance of this. Um, yeah, it, you know, for all intensive purposes for content creation, especially video editing, you're not going to notice the difference between the two. There is a caveat, you know, this will render stuff that's anything that's multi-core faster just because it has more cores. But anything hardware encoding, the render times are the same. And more importantly, playback is you know pretty much exactly the same unless you're going to use red footage or something like that. And if you're using red footage, you're not going to be using the i7, are you? So let's get into it. I did say I was disappointed with the thermals. Now the i9 is going to maintain more watts because it uses less voltage, so that means less heat, so that means you can put more watts into the i9. I wish that would sort of undervolt the i7 as well because you know it wasn't maintaining that much more watts than this one here, the i9. But of course, that is the i9 and it uses less voltage. So anyway, that is what it is. Let's find out, is this any good for video editing and how it compares to last generations? And it's mighty impressive. Oh, and as you can see there, I'm recording into Audition because Logic was crashing. So I had to force quit that thing. Don't know what's going on with Logic. And, and let me know what the audio quality is like recording into this Mac here. So anyway, let's see. And as you can see there, you know, you got 7,000 multi-core, you know, take cores on the left, the MacBook Pro 15 and the new 16, you know, 5,400. And you can see there, also, the, the single threaded performance of the i9 last generation is faster than the i7. Nothing to see there. You know, pretty much what you'd expect. One of the surprising things about this base model here is the 5300 graphics on this is, you know, sometimes faster than the Vega 20, but it's very close. And as you can see here, using metal, um, you can see there 23,800 versus 21,000. So, you know, close much better than the 560 or the 555 graphics in the previous model now one thing to know is all these tests done in the same environment same temperature and also you know the same operating system everything is exactly the same and there you can see that was my best in a bench run on this that's the i7 that's yeah it's decent for an i7 and there you can see 3000 for the you know, the i9 now you know, when I done that test last night, I got 2,400. That was when it was heat soaked. So, you know, that is what it is. By the way, the bigger display is friggin' awesome. How's it doing? You know, this is a really, you know, well lit up place. Lots of light and there's lots of reflections. You know, it looks really good. It looks actually better than the previous model. And because it's bigger, it's better. And as you can see here, Luxmark, the Vega 20, you know, 11,000 versus 10,600 with the 5,300 on the MacBook Pro 16. So again, GPU wise, very close. Now, when it comes to Photoshop here, you can see the difference in the core count. As you can see, you know, 900. I mean, how fast is that? My little baby here, Photoshop king, mate, like absolutely blitzes, even all the best PCs and that. It just kills it for Photoshop, 900. And as you can see, this one here is 7,000, I mean, sorry, 756. That is just the extra cores, right? If you have a look at the GPU score too, look at that, 69 here for the GPU score. And over here we have 83. So it's not just 100% the CPU. Also, for some reason, Photoshop likes the CPU, the Vega 20. It's probably the latency of the HBM memory. It really likes HBM memory, so, you know, that's where it's getting the benefits there, extra cores and the HBM memory of the Vega 20, but Photoshop beast, right? Now, this is what impresses me most about this i7 with the new graphics card. Now, I'll get onto Final Cut in a sec, but as you can see here, now the scores, there's not that much difference, you know, 467 versus 435. 
Now, what you need to know about this benchmark is it tests everything. It tests GPU heavy effects, CPU heavy effects, encoding, it tests playback. That's the most important thing, right? This one is not gonna be as fast as this in rendering. So the new 16 inch with i7 won't be the i9 Vega you know, 20 for exporting. But in playback, and have a look at that playback score, 52 versus 54, okay, slightly better. But generally, in the timeline, you're not gonna notice the difference between the two, unless you're using red footage, okay? Red footage is very CPU heavy, so the extra two cores will help out. But that's how I felt. When I'd done my test project, my test project that I test all my laptops on, when you hardware and code, they were exactly the same speeds exporting. When your software rendered using OpenCL, which was the fastest for some reason, this was like virtually seven minutes, and this is like seven minutes and 40 seconds. So the extra cores do help out with that. But generally in the timeline, there's literally like no difference, except if you have that red footage, as I said, if you're using red footage, you're using i9 anyway. You're not gonna have a red camera and be skimping out on a, you know, i7 versus i9. You're gonna get the i9. Of course the i9 is better, but I'm mightily impressed that in the timeline, you can get one of these, that has 32 gigs as well. And you're gonna have great performance in the timeline. You're not gonna to notice too much difference between the two, if at all. So this i7, you can definitely use for content creation. The graphics card's really good. You get good playback in the editor, which is the most important. Exporting, yes, this will be faster. And if exporting speed is very important to you, of course, get the i9 and the better graphics for this 16 inch, but this i7, you're not gonna notice the difference in the timeline with most content. And I'm really surprised because this is the base graphics. If you had the better graphics, I can imagine it would beat the i9. You know, it's very close already. Well, at least the i9 of the previous generation. So when it comes to Final Cut, now this is very interesting. It's a GPU heavy sort of 5K sort of benchmark. You can download it, test it yourself. This one with the 5300 and an i7 took 13 seconds to do Bruce X. Wow. Wasn't that long ago it was taking 30 seconds for that to do that. Now they have done improvements to metal. 17 seconds this one. 17. So the Baker 20, 17 seconds versus 13 seconds. This one's faster. Wow. So that GPU, you know, when metal's optimized for it, it really loves it. And when it comes to exporting 8K, so basically I exported that video there, 8K to ProRes. This one took a minute and 14 seconds, and this one took a minute and 25 seconds. So, you know, the 16 inch was a little bit slower. You know, it's got two less cores and also, you know, it's nip and tuck between the GPUs on both of them. They're very close. Sometimes this was faster. I'd say generally the Vega 20 was faster and then you got the extra two cores. But don't be scared of getting an i7 if you can't get to the i9. I do recommend the i9 and 32 gigs, but even with 16 gigs, this was performing very well. You'll be very happy with it. I'm very impressed on how it compares to last generation's i9, you know, especially in the timeline. All right, exporting times, different story. And I'm impressed with how good the graphics is compared to the Vega 20. I was not expecting the base model to be so close to this Vega 20. And for video editing, i7, 5300, it's going to be really good, even with the 16 gigs. Get that beautiful, gorgeous, big display. Stay tuned for my i9 coverage. I will compare the i9 to this and that as well. And yeah, that will be able to sustain more watts. So, you know, my floppy will definitely turn into a solid state when I get that i9. So anyway, this is great news. This 16 inch is really good. I recommend it, even the base model. And let me know, guys, guys, hello, guys. How is this studio quality mic? Now, I was sitting about oh, four foot away from the actual laptop. So let me know how that, you know, I'm going to hear it myself. It's going to definitely be better than those uh, AirPods. That was terrible, that audio and that. So anyway, catch you next one, guys. Stay tuned. Tally-ho one foot away from the actual laptop and you're listening to the audio being recorded into it and i want to know how it is now because the fans are actually cranking on you might be able to hear my son in the background 
maybe you can hear him, I don't know. But the fans are on, so let me know what the audio is like. It looks like it's peaking. Why is it peaking so much? It's like peaking. Hello! It's peaking. I don't know why the audio is peaking. It should be audio, audio, <laughs> auto gain. So anyway, let me know how this goes. Actually, it's a plane. Can you hear the plane? Might be able to hear that. But um, this is the internal audio. Listen to that. Oh, can you hear that? I, I've got to sing. You have to sing. Come on. Pick it up, it's not too strong for you. Take a place and pass it on. Fly away on my zephyr. I want to live forever. 